All right, welcome, YouTube Nation. We are investigating uh, rational expressions. Uh, this is something that for our college algebra class, this is a hopeful review. I want to simplify this expression 24x squared over 24x. And I'm only going to write this out once. I'm going to write it as 9 times 6 times x times x uh, over, I'm going to write it as 6 times 4 times x. And as you look at this, you can see that uh, there are things that are going to cancel, but I want you to understand why they cancel. A lot of people say it cancels it's almost like it makes zero or it just disappears. The fact is you could write this as 6x over 6x times 9x over 4. So everybody agree that that could be written, rewritten in that way. What is 6x over 6x? 1. So it doesn't necessarily cancel, it just it becomes 1. And then 1 times anything is just itself, so 9x over 4. Sometimes you have binomials that will cancel. So in this case, x minus 3 times x minus, or divided by x minus 3 will cancel. Uh, that makes 1, and so you're left with just 2x squared. I get to grade your test, and I see all sorts of new mathematics that's developed, almost invented by you. And so I'll do an example right now. 5x over 10x squared gives me 1 over 2x. Minus 20 over 40x makes 1 over 2x. And then 1 over 2x minus 1 over 2x is 0. So those are sometimes the things that I see. Would everybody agree that that's entirely incorrect? Very good. The key is... Before we cancel things up or break fractions up or anything, we must write them in factored form. So what factors out of the top? What are you left with? What factors out of the bottom? What are you left with? So you can see that the x minus 4s will divide and make 1. 5 over 10x is 1 over 2x. If I was an undisciplined person, what is the temptation to do for letter D? Say I'm going to do the problem incorrectly. What might people be tempted to do? Just cross off the x squareds. Don't do that. It's entirely illegal. What should we do instead? Factor. Top factors to x plus 3 times x minus 3. The bottom factor is 2, x minus 3 times x minus 2. You can see that the x minus 3 divided by the x minus 3 is 1. So we're left with x plus 3 over x minus 2. If we multiply, you, you don't cross multiply. You would cross multiply if you saw an equal sign. So if you saw something like this, that's the point where we could cross multiply. But when you have just a multiplication symbol, you multiply straight across. You might look across from each other to see if something reduces. Sure enough, 3 over 9 makes 1 over 3, and 4x over 2x makes 2 over 1. So this will reduce to 2 thirds. But that's not cross multiplying. What's going to cancel for uh, letter B? x plus 2's, x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 is 1. And the 4 over the 12, I'll end up with x minus 1 over 3. Why don't you try letters C and D on your own? Any questions on those two? We good? How is it different if I divide? Multiply by the reciprocal. 2x over 3 times 12 over 6x squared. You can see that the 12 over 3 makes 4 over 1, and the 2x over 6x squared makes 1 over 3x, so 4 over 3x. Sometimes to save space, instead of rewriting the whole thing, sometimes people just switch the second one. as I have done, and then just get rid of what was there. You can see that uh, x plus 1 
x plus 1, x minus 2, x minus 2, plus of x times x plus 2. Please try letter C and D on your own. Okay, you can see for letter C, you get x minus 1 times x minus 3. Um, sometimes people write it divided because you're used to putting something in the denominator because we get these fractions. Uh, but for letter D, uh, the x plus 1 will cancel with the x plus 1, x minus 2, and x minus 2. A lot of people forget to write the 3. Don't forget to write 3 times x plus 4. Um, that'll cost you a point on the test. You can do that about that guy sitting right there. Did I catch anybody? Did anybody forget it? You guys are all way too smart for that. But good job. Okay, last section. If I'm going to add or subtract rational expressions, what do I have to have? Okay, so what's the common denominator here? So I multiply top and bottom by 2. So 6x minus 5. I'm sorry, 6x minus 10. Over 6. Plus 8x minus 1 over 6. And now just combine like terms. 14x minus 11 over 6. You can see for letter B, uh, they have denominators that are binomials. And since they are the same, we can just combine them. So I have a 2x minus 3 over x plus 4. But what about letter C? What is going to be the common denominator there? Or what do I do in order to create a common denominator? Yeah. Um, you know, the temptation for a lot of people is to subtract one from each denominator, or from each uh, part of the fraction. That you cannot do, okay? Just like if you had denominators of six and seven, you know, your common denominator would be 42. You couldn't just say subtract one from the seven and then get a common denominator. So we're gonna multiply top and bottom by x, and then over here, top and bottom by x minus one, over x minus one. Two x squared over x times x minus 1 plus 3x minus 3 over x times x minus 1. Now that they have common denominators, we'll look to see if we have anything we can combine together. There are no like terms to combine together, but we write as one fraction. I like to try to make sure that I express the denominator in factored form. That way, in case something cancels, it's easier to see. If you decide to multiply it out into x squared minus x, that's fine. I chose not to. How about letter D? Last one. What do I do to get common denominators? Good. So you look at the x squared minus 4. You recognize you have an x minus 2 times x plus 2. And so that tells me that instead of multiplying the top and bottom by x squared minus 4, I just multiply the top and bottom by x minus 2. And that's nice. It saves a lot of work for myself. So I have 5 over x squared minus 4 minus 6 times x minus 2 over that x minus 2 times x plus 2. Are we going to have any terms that combine here? We've got the 5 and then the positive 12, correct? So I have a 5 and a positive 12 is going to make 17. I have a negative 6x. And a denominator x minus 2 times x plus 2. And that's my answer. Should be a nice review. Today's assignment is pretty straightforward. A lot of you guys remember this and like it. I'm going to give you data practice it. Tomorrow will be definitely more complicated. I expect that there will be many questions tomorrow. Okay? Good job.